Okay, we've got the June 09 exam. We're on page 8, and we'll see how far we can get. We're starting with question 48, and these are, uh, they want answers, in some cases, showing your work. So 48, a car travels 4 meters east, and then 4 meters north. Determine the magnitude of the car's resultant displacement. Displacement is from the beginning of the trip to the end, regardless of the path you took. So that's a right triangle. 4 squared plus 4 squared is equal to the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of 4 squared plus 4 squared. Calculator time. And it's the square root of 32, which is about 5.65. A whole bunch of other decimal places on my calculator. Do not list them all. Um, technically, uh, our answer should only be precise to one decimal place. So oh, no, two decimal. 4.00 and 4.00 in the question. So only give me two in the answer. And the units are there. Question 49. There's a lot of numbers here for just one point. So let's read it. A 70 kilogram hockey player skating east on an ice rink is hit by a 0.1 kilogram hockey puck moving towards the west. Ow! The puck exerts all right, 50 newtons of force is exerted by the puck on the player. Determine the magnitude of the force that the player exerts on the puck equal and opposite forces. It hits with 50 newtons. The player is going to hit it with 50 newtons of force. One point, not a lot of fancy stuff there. Question 50 is going to be for two points. So they're going to want some work. On a snow-covered road, a car with a mass of 1,100 kilograms collides head-on with a van having a mass of 2.7, so two. 1,500 kilograms traveling at 80 meters, 8 meters per second. As a result of the collision, the vehicles lock together and immediately come to rest. Calculate the speed of the car. Show all your work, including the equation, substitution with units, and neglect friction. Well, let's see. I've got a car. The mass of the car is 1.1 times 10 to the 3 kilograms, traveling at some unknown velocity. It's going to hit the mass, we'll call it M1 and V1. going to hit a truck, M2, or a van, I guess. That's 2.5 times 10 to the 8 kilograms, traveling at a velocity of 8 meters per second. Um, they hit and they come to rest. And this is a question about conservation of momentum. The momentum of the car plus momentum is equal to the momentum of the van minus momentum. And when they hit, there's no result momentum, so there must not have been any momentum before. And you think, well, wait, they both have momentum. But now we've got to deal with positive and negative. So the sum of the momentum would be zero. We know that because after the collision, there's zero momentum after, so there must have been zero momentum before. So we can write this, P before equals P after. And momentum is equal to mass times velocity. You got that from right above it. So... Uh, the momentum of the uh, car, mass 1 times V1, is going to be equal to the momentum of the van, M2 times V2. Well, if we want to know the momentum of, or the velocity of the car, we simply divide both equations by the mass of the car, and that gives us uh, the velocity of the car. So we can say 2.5 times 10 to the 8 kilograms, don't forget units, times 8 meters per second divided by 1.1 times 10 to the 3 kilograms and that's going to be equal to our velocity afterwards. So 
So velocity one will equal, get the calculator out. And I'm coming up with uh, 18.18, but the velocity they gave us was uh, 8.0. So let's just keep one decimal point. Let's say 18.1 meters per second. Now you could obviously round that to 18. 0.2 meters per second, because the answer was in fact 18.18. Uh, either one of these would be acceptable as the answer. Question 51. A baby in a stroller. How cute. Have a total mass of 20 kilograms. A force of 36 newtons keeps the stroller moving in a circular path with a radius of 5 meters. I wonder how they're doing that. Hmm. Calculate the speed at which a stroller moves around the curve. Show all work, including the equation substitution with units for two points. So we've got a mass equal to 20 kilograms. A force of 36 newtons. And it's in a radius of 5 meters, 5.0 meters. Okay. So this is a circular motion or centripetal force. And if we find it on our formula sheet, we discover that uh, force centripetal, here it is, is equal to mass times acceleration centripetal. And acceleration centripetal is V squared over R. So let's combine them. We can say force centripetal is equal to m v squared over r. We want to find v. We want to get v by itself, so we need some algebra. Uh, multiply both sides by r. Force centripetal times r is equal to m v squared. Divide both sides by mass. And take the square root of both sides. So our answer should be the square root of... 36 newtons times 5.0 meters divided by 20 kilograms. Got everything with units. Let's just get the calculator out and see what the answer is. And I've got the square root of 9, which would be 3. And I'm looking for velocity. So that's got to be meters per second. We can check. Let's see, this would be uh, a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So if kilograms would cancel. It would be meters squared per second squared. Take the square root of it. It would be meters per second. That works. 52. We've got a 10 newton force compressing a spring 0.25 meters from its equilibrium position. And we want the spring constant. For two points, show our work. So we've got a force of 10 newtons. We're compressing a spring from its rest position 0.25 meters. And we're looking for the spring constant. Now I found those pretty quick, but uh, if I didn't remember them, I could have just gone off and looked and found a change in spring length from an equilibrium position is x. And spring constant is uh, somewhere up here as k. And the relationship is uh, force in a spring is kx. So force in a spring is kx. I'm looking for k. Divide both sides of the equation by x. And get my calculator out. I don't even need my calculator for this one. The answer is going to be 40. It's going to be 10 newtons divided by 0.25 meters and uh, the answer is going to be uh, 40 newtons per meter it means it requires 40 newtons to stretch a spring an entire meter I like it